Hey there everyone! Today I wanted to share with you how I edit my digital decorations so that I have one synced display. So this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to use Final Cut Pro, but rather how you can export layered files individually so that you have the illusion of a synced show. Because technically speaking, this isn't really synced. I have to go to each individual projector every night to start them. but. It sort of, if I time them perfectly, gives the illusion of a sync display. The reason I decided to edit this way last year was because I, I really wanted parts of my display to sync up. I wanted you as the viewer to be drawn in by one portion of the show at a time. So I started researching how I could sync up my display. And while I'm not super savvy, I did have Final Cut Pro, and there was a gentleman that was in the FX decorating, Atmos FX decorating community on Facebook that basically told me how to do this step by step, um, which was perfect because I already have Final Cut Pro and I already knew how to edit in Final Cut Pro, so double bonus. But basically, I took, for my purposes, I wanted to sync four portions of my show. I created all the files and I lined them up where the audio would be one primary audio at a time. So these four layers, this is my garage, this is my door, these are my pumpkins, and this is my 3D form. So I have edited, the, edited these in a fashion that the audio will show up first on the garage. I mean, there's gonna be video on everything, but the audio will be playing first on the garage, then it'll go to the pumpkins, then it'll go to the 3D form, and then it goes to the door. So it kind of jumps around. But basically, um, if I do this correctly each night by running and starting each projector, um, everything will kind of line up. And again, you as the viewer, your eye will visually will follow what, wherever the audio is. <laughs> so hopefully I explained that correctly. I'm going to show you um, the end result. But let's get started with this first. So I have four layers. I want to export them, but I need them to export individually. I don't want all of this in one file. If you were to export right now, you would get all of this in one file, but you would only see the top layer, and then you would have the audio of everything. So we don't want that. So we need to disable everything in order to start exporting. So I've technically got these all, nope, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to select them all, Command A, and I want to disable. And then I'm just going to click off to deselect. And now I'm going to select by clicking on the first clip on my layer, do shift, and then click on the last clip. And now my door layer is selected. So I need to enable this. So that was right click enable. And now, I, now I've isolated this layer, just the doorway, from the rest of the layers. And now I can export it. So you go to File, Share, and you're going to export the file. So I'm not going to like save save this because I already have, but basically you're just going to name it, select where you're going to save it, click Next, and you'll be good with saving. It'll take a little bit of time uh, because these are pretty big files. My display is about an hour and 24 minutes, so it can take a little bit of time to save these. But when you're done um, with this layer, you'll do the same process. So this is already selected easily. I can just right click and disable it again. And then go to my next whichever layer and so on and so forth. But you want to click the beginning, click the end, everything in between, enable it. And then you'll go to file, share, export the file. Okay, so after you've done this with all of your layers, you're going to have some pretty big files. So Final Cut Pro, when it saves, again, I have a lot in my show, so it's a lot of video, and that tends to make up a pretty large file size. If you're doing ho the Hallusion, where those files tend to have no background, those generally will be a smaller file size just because there's not a lot of 
going on visually. However, on my garage, my door, um, in the window, I have a lot of background on my files too, so they tend to be large files. Uh, just as an example, the window, uh, the output was 40 gigabytes. So if you know anything about trying to save to a USB drive, you will never be able to save a 40 gigabyte file. I mean, unless you change some settings, I think it's possible, but straight out of the box, for the most part, you can't save anything over four gigabytes. You can kind of squeeze a little bit more out, maybe like a four point, like I know this one, 4.14, I was able to save to a USB. So just to pinch over four gigabytes is like the rule of thumb. So in order to make these super large files, because my garage and my doorway, after I got done saving those last night, they were around 50 gigabyte files. So basically what I will do is I will use um, iMovie to make them smaller. So this I've already popped in my um, window file, but if you don't know how to do that, you just go to import, select your file, don't import them all. Select the file you want and then import it. And it'll just show up right here. So if you click on it, it outlines in yellow. So the whole thing is saved. Then you want to, I'm sorry, not saved, but it's selected. You don't need to drag it down here or anything else. You just click on it, make sure the whole thing's clicked. Go over here to, this is actually share. If you hover over it, you'll see share. And then you're going to select file. Generally, when I come in here, high is selected, and you'll see that this, this file will get an output of about 12, almost 13 gigabytes. Again, still too high, I wanna get around four. So I'm gonna play around, whereas this was high, I'm gonna go to custom. And I'm gonna play around with this slider until I get to around four gigabytes. All right, that's close enough. And then I would select next, and I would save it. Now, I've already done this, so I'm not going to save it again, but I'm going to show you my 40 gigabyte file became 3.94 gigabytes. So now I can easily put it on a USB drive. So here we are. This is the final product. Um, while it's not the yard, it kind of will give you an idea of what I do each night. I have to run to each projector and start it. So I'll kind of, on a smaller scale. Obviously, I can start that a lot quicker than I was in the yard, but each night I will go to each projector, turn them on, uh, select the file, press play, and press pause. That's exactly where I want them to start, and then once it gets dark, I run to each projector and press play with the remote. It's a lot easier because I actually have three projectors that are the same, so I have the same remote, um, so it makes it a lot more convenient. But this is it. This is how my projections will look. Uh, the garage is the primary audio at this point in the show. Um, the pumpkins are just kind of using a buffer file or funny faces. And that's it. So if you have any questions about my 2020 display or how I use digital decorations, please let me know in the comments below. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. I have a sweet tooth, don't you know? And if I cannot find the loot, I just might eat you as a substitute. Time to hide, better run, close your eyes, hold my tongue. You just might have a fight by the time this night's done. If I hear you are near, there'll be trouble, my dears. You will come face to face with the worst of your fears. It's no use to plead, though it won't be as you say.